dear students in today's video lecture we will resume our study of derivation languages further last time we had learned a lot about the derivation derivation word and derivation language etc now we will start from canonical derivations and graph traversals what does the word canonical means it means a standard well defined prototype that is followed by everyone so it, it's a standard method of traversing a graph or derivation in this uh, section we will learn a few things before that we get acquaintance with the technical terms through this definition so read this definition carefully let r is equal to vf be a rewriting system as you remember that v includes variables and terminals vn means non terminals vt means terminals so v includes variables as well as terminals and f includes the production rules so these this combination of v and f defines a rewriting system in fact this v in uh, v includes v n v t and f includes all the production rules so only start symbol is left so start when we define a grammar we take uh, we take start symbol and as an additional from this rewriting system because we have to take complete grammar from the starting point whereas in the rewriting system we need to know how to make the replacements only we don't need a starting point so therefore you can have grammar if you take s also and this rewriting system vf now we move ahead let r be a rewriting system with w belonging to v union vf star what does this mean w is a word which can contain elements from v elements from v are variables and terminals and it can contain elements of vf also vf is a set of all the productions and these productions are taken up by their names so so this w is a string containing variables terminals or production rules when i say production rule it is a name of the production rule like f1 f2 f3 etc if w can be written as w is equal to this this is a string before we take it uh, we uh, we take it very uh, uh, clearly we move on to this production so f is a production name of the production which can replace p to q and this f belongs to f so in this rewriting system this is a production existing in this set now i move back to this string so let's take up the break up of this string this string contains x1 first part second part is f third part is q and fourth part is x2 so f is a production production rule given here p f p to q and q is the right hand side of a production rule so f and q are you clear about it f is a production rule name of the production rule and q is the uh, the element existing on the right hand of the production rule and the rest of the string is x1 is also the remaining part of the string which is on the left of f and x2 is also the remaining part of the string which is on the right hand right hand side of the q right hand of right of the q so now this string w is broken in a way that name of the production and the special symbol q which is on the right hand side of the production is taken and the remaining string is also broken so you have 
broken the string into four parts here x1 belongs to v union f star means x1 can contain variables terminals as well as productions whereas x2 belongs to v star means x2 can contain only variables and terminals no production rule will be there See, look at it carefully so uh, look at it x2 belongs to v star means x2 will not contain any production symbol it will contain only variable and terminals whereas x1 belongs to v union vf star means x1 can contain variables terminals as well as production rules so now this string is very clear this uh, w w word is very clear first part of the string x1 can contain variables terminals and production rules there is no production rule and right hand side of any production rule and the remaining string does not contain any production rule right now move ahead we say that w right reduces to x1 x2 and written as w is equal to x1 f q x2 derives right reduces x1 x2 what does this mean to understand it, it in a better way let's understand this string first if we draw it in the form of a production table i'm drawing it so you start from the start symbol then you have a few replacements a few more replacements and so on and after a few replacements let's say you have a p here and after that uh, this p will be replaced with q why because there is a production that p can be this is the production p can be replaced with q so f production according to the f production p will be replaced with q and on the right hand side also you have some you have some tree uh, graph like this and so on so uh, this part of the graph or tree whatever you call this is nothing but x1 and then then you have production f which uh, sorry this p is also part of this graph x uh, this string x1 so now p using production f will be replaced with q and after that also you have a subgraph called x2 now if you study it carefully this is x1 then production f will be used q so uh, sequence word sequence of it will be x1 f q x2 so like this x1 f q x2 right <clears throat> now this x1 this this part of the tree or graph can contain variables terminals as well as productions rules also but this part of the tree cannot contain any production it will contain only variables and terminals so in nutshell this part this much part of the tree will not contain any production rule so this part this much part will be free of the production rules so now this tree was earlier free of production rules and we have introduced one more character into it so instead of uh, in uh, look at it instead of x2 only now qx2 is this much part of the string is free from the production rule so it can be represented by this is just a production and you can reduce also it also so this can be again represented by x2 so x1 
this part used production rules so this production rule is removed now remaining part x2 is free from the production rule so the word w can be written in the form of x1 x2 where x1 can contain production rules but x2 cannot contain the production rules so this symbol let's remove the jump i have littered here <clears throat> so this is the right reduction of this expression so w this string right reduces to this form x1 x2 so this procedure will be used further to simplify now let's move on to this theorem let r v f be a rewriting system with the word w w belongs to dr what is dr dr is the language language derivation language we had learnt it in the previous lecture so w belongs to derivation language means w is a word from the derivation language of this rewriting system if w is equal to wn right reduces wn minus 1 and if we go on right reducing and reach w1 so this uh, and this w1 is domain of w then we can write codomain of w1 derives codomain of w2 derives codomain of w3 and ultimately we reach wn so this is just a reverse traversal of this strings let's move on you uh, for the time being don't need to move into the proof of this theorem just go into the statement only now next onwards we will try draw, uh, drawing a derivation from a word on and vice versa so before that we will learn a few terminology uh, few terms um, focus to this given the derivation graph consider any two nodes a and b so a and b are any of the two nodes of the graph now there are three possibilities number 1 either a is below b being below means that a is at higher level and after some traversals we reach b you can better understand it so if either uh, first uh, first case is a is below b second opportunity is b is below a so either a is below b or b is below a and the third opportunity is there is no path between a and b so in case there is no path between a and b either of the node either a is to the left of b or a is to the right of b so only these three possibilities are there whenever we take any of the two nodes these things can be written in analytical language like this uh, see node a is below node b this can be depicted by this method so if a is below b then we write that there is a relation b which uh, which specifies a is below b so this a is below b belongs to uh, so this pair a b belongs to capital b means a is below b if we want to write c is below d then c d belongs to b if we want to write b is below a we will write b a belongs to b and so on and similarly if a is to the left of b then we will write a b belongs to left so this will mean that a is on the left of b if b is on the left of a it will be written as b a belongs to l okay so now we have two relations b 
and L. B, B relation means that the first element of the pair is below the second element and similarly L relation means the first element of the pair is to the left of the second element of the pair. Now let's move on to this definition. It says let n be a finite set of nodes. Right? When you are drawing a tree or a graph you have nodes. So n is the set of those nodes and b and l be two relations on n. b and l relations we have already studied. Uh, these are the relations on N such that B and L are transitive. Before moving on to it, I, I have missed the thing. Let's take it again. So B is below and L is left relation. These relations are irreflexive. Irreflexive means reflexive relations are if, a, if an element is related to itself means a is related to a then it is called reflexive so irreflexive means a is not related to a so it's not possible that any any node is below itself so it's also not possible that any node is above itself similarly it's not possible any node is to the left of itself so B and L both are irreflexive, but they are transitive. Transitive means if A is below B and B is below C, then A is also below C. A C belongs to B. So they are reflexive, they are transitive, but they are not reflexive. So now let's move back to the definition. Let N be a finite set of nodes and B and L be two relations in N such that B and L are transitive. Secondly, B, L, B, R, L, R, E, Q is a partition of N cross N. Let's understand it in a better way. First of all, think what is N cross N? N cross N is a set of pairs whose first element will be from this set and the second element will be from this set. It is similar to having <coughs> A cross B. So A cross B has is a set of pairs where first element will be from A and the second element from will be from B. Here we are having N cross N. So we will have pairs where first element will be from N means node and the second element will also be from N means node. So this gives you a pair of nodes. So any pair of nodes can either be, uh, be below each other means it can belong to B or it can belong to L means first node in the pair is on the left of the second node. What is this BR? To understand it BR is equal to AB where BA belongs to B means if BA belongs to B that is B is below A then AB means A will be above B so opposite of B so this will be depicted by BR so eventually this means that BR means above so if B is below A then A will be below, above B and this will be written as BR. Similarly, LR is also taken in the same way. If, a, B, if BA belongs to L, then AB belongs to B, uh, LR. So B means below and BR means above. L means left and LR means opposite of it means right. So B, L, B, R, L, R and EQ is equality relation means A is equal to A means both the elements are the same. So this is equality relation. So now all the pairs 
means you have all the combination first element let us suppose node has three elements a b c so first pair will be a a second will be a b so third will be a c similarly b a b b b c c a c b c c so these will be all the nodes in that case so all these nodes you take each pair if it uh, each and every pair will be picked it will belong to it will either belong to b means first element will be on the uh, will be below the right or it will belong to l or it will belong to br or it will belong to lr or it will belong to eq Bel uh, belonging to this means element first element is on the uh, is below the second element belonging to l means first element is on the left of the second element br means first element is on the right of the uh, sorry first element is above the second element and lr means first element is on the right of the second element and equal means both are the same so uh, you pick any pair for example you pick aa a a r equal you pick another a b it it will either be belong to b or belong to l or so so any pair can belong to any one of it not not a combination of two so it will belong to any one of this groups right so if these two conditions are there then the system d d is uh, defined a system which contains n means set of nodes b and l means below and left groups so combination of n b l forms a graph which is called doubly ordered graph dog so doubly ordered graph is a combination of set of nodes and b and l right hope you understand the meaning of dog let's now move on to this theorem let d be a doubly ordered graph and all the things contained in the dog are specified here n b and l uh, so n can be written uniquely what is n n is a set of nodes so set of nodes can be arranged in a proper sequence n1 n2 n3 and so on nk suppose there are k nodes so these can be arranged in a in a proper order such that i is greater than j so suppose uh, i is 9 and j is 5 so it becomes this pair becomes n9 n5 so n9 will be appearing on the later side and n5 will be appearing on the earlier side so n5 will come before n9 so uh, either n i n j belongs to b means n i means an element picked from the later in the order and the second element is picked from the earlier part of the order so later element is to the uh, is below the earlier element so if nodes are arranged in this manner that means that the elements on the right are number 1 either below the left elements on the right are either below the elements on the left for example you take n1 n2 so in the graph n2 will be on the right of n1 right and the second condition is n i n j means n9 and n5 belong to l r what does l r means l was left and l r is right uh, okay so the later part is either on the uh, is either below the element on the left part 
to make it more clear let's take this in a little bit of greater detail let's take n1 n2 n3 n4 n5 5 n6 n7 n8 and so on so let us suppose these are the elements of set n so now any element appearing either appearing earlier let us suppose n3 and an element appearing on the right hand side n7 so if an element appears later in the sequence this will be either below the first element or to the right of element for example you take n3 and n7 this means that n7 will be either on the right of the n or it will be below the n in the graph let's move on no need to go into it now we move to next section uh, which deals with context sensitivity of derivation languages what does context sensitive graph means uh, in fact before going into detail let's study this theorem first it says r vf be a rewriting system then there is a deterministic linearly bounded automata you have studied all the machines uh, in the previous chapters um, for example finite state automata then you had uh, lean, uh, push down automata then you had linearly bounded at automata and turing machines etc so among them i am talking of the linearly bounded automaton lba so any context sensitive language is equivalent to a linearly bounded automaton so this theorem what does they it says that if r is a rewriting system then there is a deterministic deterministic you understand it well deterministic lba a with input alphabet v union vf such that the derivation language of this rewriting system is equivalent to the linearly bounded automata language generated by the linearly bounded automata so this rule says this rule says that for every linearly bounded automata there is a context sensitive language and vice versa let's move on no need to go into the details let's move on to this section derivations in the context sensitive grammars earlier we had context free grammars if you remember context free grammars and context sensitive grammars in case of context free grammars there was Uh, there was no special case in in the form of derivation here we will find some problems in derivation uh, while dealing with the context sensitive grammars first recall it what is a context sensitive grammar context sensitive grammar has production rules of this form uh, q1 a q2 is replaced with q1 p q2 so this part is known as this part this part is unchanged in the right hand side also this is known as left context and similarly this part q2 also is unchanged in the right hand side so this is right context so only major replacement 
is uh, is made by replacing a with p so here q q1 q2 and p q1 q2 and p belong to vn union vt star means q1 q2 and p are the string containing non terminal mean variable sim uh, variable symbols and terminal symbols also means constants or terminals so q1 q2 and p q1 q2 and p these strings can contain variables as well as terminals but a belongs to vn only so a can contain only variable non terminal symbol and that also a single variable we are not putting star here that means that a is a single variable so a is a single variable so single variable is replaced with a string of variables as well as terminals so definitely p should not be equal to lambda null means p should not be a uh, an empty string because if it is so then q1 a q2 its length is q length of q1 plus 1 plus length of q2 so length of q1 plus q2 plus 1 so on this side length of q1 plus length of q2 this length will be 0 so if a if p is an empty string then length of this string will be smaller than length of this string so which is not allowed this is allowed only in case of production like this so a is null is never allowed s is s to null is allowed only in case where s does not appear on the right hand side of any of the productions so basically this kind of production rules are either uh, equal in length if length of p is 1 if length of p is greater than 1 then its length will be increased so such production productions will usually increase the length so they are known as length increasing uh, produ productions and similarly the grammar will be termed length increasing grammar so context sensitive grammar will be having uh, uh, all the productions of this form let's go into a bit of more detail uh, here we are having uh, we are having a grammar consider for instance the simple context sensitive grammar with three production rules all the production rules are labeled as f1 f2 and f3 so first production rule is this means s can be replaced with it and the second production rule and third production rule see look at them carefully first of all look f2 in f2 a is the left context and b is right context so in fact a is replaced with x and left and right context are changed unchanged similarly in this form b is left context small b and small c is the right context and this part of the string will be replaced with, with this part of the string similarly in the first and look at this production this production also is falls in this category context sensitive where left context is null and right context is also null null means empty string so this is basically a context free production but it can be dealt as context sensitive production also now <clears throat> uh let's analyze the uh, such kind of productions context sensitive productions 
if you watch it carefully that only this portion of the string is replaced with this portion rest of the string is unchanged so if we take this production a to p it is a context free production context free production rule so this also will have the same effect as in this case right so a if we use this production a will be replaced with p and we will get q1 p q2 so this and this both of these production will make the same replacement then what is the difference the difference that the difference is that in case of in, in this case first context free production if we have a string having a only irrespective of anything on the left hand side anything on on the right hand side we will replace a with p but in case of context sensitive language if a is preceded by q1 and is followed by q2 then only this production this replacement will be made a will be replaced with p so replacement is the same but in this case replacement can happen only in a special case when a is preceded by q1 and a is followed by q2 so left and right context are there then only you can make this replacement whereas in context free production uh, whatever is preceded and whatever is following the uh, the special symbol you can simply replace it so in such cases there is a dependence on the context so left context and right context depending on the presence of these contexts only this can be replaced so there is a context dependency in case of context sensitive language we will deal it with more detail a little ahead so such context sensitive productions this production can also be written as this look at this form q1 and q2 are the left context q2 and q sorry q1 and q2 are the left and right contexts so this production takes the form the the variable on the left hand side and the string on the right hand side they are represented as context free production but then putting a bar and then writing left context hyphen right context so this is another notation of writing the context sensitive production i repeat the actual symbol which is to be replaced the actual string which is which replaces this symbol are written in this form then we put a vertical bar then we write left context and separated by hyphen we write the right context so these this is another form of writing the same production let's move on to the definition let g be a grammar context sensitive grammar vn vt f are the production these are set of non terminals means variable set of terminals production set of production rules start symbol so it's a context sensitive grammar a derivation g the derivation from a word w0 to w1 then to w2 then to w3 and so on reaches wn so this is given derivation is said to be context sensitive leftmost or canonical derivation if wi uh, the string wi is again broken into five parts 1 2 3 4 5 so first uh, middle part of this string is the symbol which is to be replaced and then you have left context and right context which are given in the production rule 
and the remaining string on the left hand side and the remaining string on the right hand side so a word a string is broken into five parts so w i plus one is is obtained by simply replacing a with p because we have the production rule q1 a r replaces q1 p r so this will replace q1 q1 a r will be replaced with q1 p r so w i is this and after making a replacement after making derivation a will be replaced with p so this derivative this string will become xi xi will be unchanged qi and ri are the left contexts and right context they are also unchanged a is replaced with p so wi changes to wi plus 1 where this production is here so this is a context sensitive production means left and right contexts a and p so this is known as leftmost production leftmost derivation if x q uh, if x q r length of the, this string is greater than length of x q this is length of string means how many elements are there in this string so length of this complete string is greater than length of x q only means first two portions and similarly this rule x q means in the next word r greater in length uh, from the x so if these two rules are followed then it will be known as leftmost canonical derivation this will uh, in just a minute we have an example it will show you the context sensitivity in a greater detail let's take this example in this example <clears throat> consider the context sensitive grammar we have csg context sensitive grammar with start symbol s and the following productions we are having five productions here all the productions are labeled as f1 f2 f3 f5 so we will call these productions by these names so first production s to abc second production a to xy in the first production what are the left and right contexts nil null on the left context null on the right context similarly null left context and null right context but but in this production left context is a and right context if it is not written here it is uh, empty so the uh, therefore for this kind of production it can be written as this also for a bit of more simplification b sorry the uh, left context is a the remaining part is b then uh, i put this for indicating this arrow right and a is the left context de so actually this production in a simpler form is this so b replaces with de but left context a should be there similarly this production similarly this production can also be written like this so this is f4 f4 has no left context it is obvious from here so nothing is written to the left of this symbol and right context is c so this production will be e c 
changes to a a c right hope you understand it so uh, these productions are given in the context sensitive grammar so what uh, a sort of uh, derivation tree is given here derivation word is given here s we start from the start symbol we use f1 production f1 production replaces s with abc okay so now using f3 production b is replaced with de so this b is replaced with de but left context should be there so ab is replaced with ade so ab is replaced with ade and the remaining string is as such and after that we use f4 production e to aa but right context is c so it should be ec right so ec is replaced with aac and after that we use production f5 f5 replaces c there is no left and right context null empty left and right contexts are there so c will be replaced with fg and further we use f2 production in which a replaces xy will be giving you x y d a a f g so we followed this uh, implementation of this sequence f1 f3 f4 f5 f2 and from the start symbol we reached at this string the same string can also be achieved by starting from s and using production rules in this sequence you can check it i'm oh, sorry this is the same the same can be achieved by using this sequence of production rules and using this sequence of production rules also so first of all this string is achievable from the start symbol using different derivation trees first derivation is this second derivation is this third derivation is this so this is an ambiguous string if you remember amb ambiguous strings are the strings which can be obtained by more than one derivation graph or derivation tree so this is ambiguous but we have we are uh, we are to understand the context sensitivity so now let us focus on to this diagram let me reduce in size so that complete graph comes in a single frame so from the start symbol we applied f1 and we got abc and on a f2 was applied xy was achieved on b f3 was applied de was achieved and so on so this is the derivation graph for achieving the same string this x y d a a f g yield of this graph is x y d a a f g yield of this graph is uh, so now this is achieved by these replacements now context sensitivity can be represented in this form this is the same derivation but we are putting a few dotted arrows what does these dotted arrows means for example we used production f3 to replace b with de let's go to production f3 what was this production f3 was uh, b replaced with de with left context of a means actually production was ab replaces ade so effective production is b because a remains as such a is as such the replacement which takes place is b is replaced with de but left context a should be there so this is depicted in the graph by this dotted arrow so this dotted arrow indicates 
context dependence so b will be replaced with de using f3 only if a is present on the left side so a is if a is present on the left hand side then we can replace it similarly this context sensitivity is indicated so e can be replaced with aa using f4 let's go on to f4 f4 says e a a but right context c should be there so therefore this replacement is possible this replacement is possible only if there is right context present c right so this replacement is dependent context dependent on c this replacement is context dependent on a this context dependence is indicated by this symbol in this book greater than c sign c greater than sign c indicates context sensitivity what does this mean suppose you replace uh, you replace s with abc and then you replace a with xy so now you will have what you will be having x y b c so x y b c now we are not having b on a on the left hand side of b we are having string x y b so there is no left context so we will not be able to replace it so if we have used f2 first then we will not be able to use f3 because the element which was used as a left context is replaced before using f3 similarly if we use this production first f5 then c will be replaced with fg and the string will be efg but we would be able to replace ec with aac so right context should be there so these dependency context dependencies are indicated by dotted arrows hope you understand it similarly <clears throat> similarly another dependency is indicated by this symbol greater than uh, less than or f less than or c means context dependency this is the dependency between these two rules these two production rules it says that if you use f3 first then f2 cannot be used hello okay okay <clears throat> i repeat in this graph we have another kind of dependency called uh, written as smaller than f signal smaller than f signal so uh, it is a uh, finally a dependency less than f is shown between instances of rewrite rules to show that one rule is free to be applied after other rule has been used so this rule can be applied only when this rule has been used so if you use it first then this rule will not be applicable so this can be used before this so this kind of dependency is indicated by this term so this is a complete graph in which thick edges show exact replacement for example we used ab we replaced ab with ade but b was exactly absolutely changed with de a was unchanged so thick edges in indicate exact replacement and dotted edges indicate sensitivity 
सी मीन्स कॉन्टेक्स्ट सेंसिटिविटी 